guys, I'm Ryan Houston and welcome to my Fly Tying channel. This channel contains hundreds of different videos covering all manner of different patterns, techniques uh, and styles of fly tying. There's something here to suit almost everybody so hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, let's get on with the show. Hi guys, welcome back. So tonight what we're going to tie is another mop fly, uh, this time a black and orange mop fly. So what I'm going to use here is I have a 3.2mm brass uh, fluorescent orange bead uh, and I am using these uh, blouser and blob, barbless blob hooks, it's a mouthful, size 10s. So um, the size 10 I find in these sort of blob hooks is to me equivalent more to like a size 8 but that's good because it has the gape uh, because to deal with the frits and the sort of heavy materials that you're using. So I'm using Textream uh, fluorescent orange or fluorescent hot orange thread to tie this. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the core of the mop material uh, to secure the, the bead. Uh, why are they called mop flies? Because the stuff that you're tying with comes from one of these mops. So you can buy uh, packets of mop material or you can go to your local uh, supermarket or pound store or something like that and you should find mops uh, in all manner of different colours. So what I'm going to do is I'm gluing the thread here and I'm using uh, one of these precision super glue gels for that. The idea is that the uh, core or the mop material is going to fuse to the hook and stop our bead from moving. So, top material for this one is black. And I'm going to take it close up to the back of the bead and I'm pinching it to stop it unraveling on itself because essentially it is a thread of chenille that's just uh, wound on itself or twisted on itself and then I'll bind that down in so that will fuse the, the mop core to the, uh, to the hook itself. So, I'm going to use one of these uh, 15 mil uh, fluorescent. I think this is Blob Tech actually. This one, uh, Fritz's. And I just tie it in across the core at the back here, and then take my thread to the front, and then we'll wrap. Fritz, and you notice I'm putting a wrap on, folding it back like I would a hackle, and then giving the core a good stretch before each new wrap. That'll give you a nice tight body, less likelihood of it slipping. So once I get to the end here, uh, I'll take it over to where it tightens up behind the bead, wherever that happens to be. At this time, it happened to be on the far side of the shank. A few wraps across it, a few wraps in front of it. Fold it back over so you're tying it across it again, and that just means that there's several tie-ins to stop it from slipping out. Then trim it, fold back the frets and pinch it, and then put a few good wraps in just behind the, the bead, and then I'm gonna whip finish it. Well I finished with my hands, you can whip finish. Now what I do here is I tend to do it twice, so I have one three wraps on there. And then I'll put on another go of them. My thinking behind that is that because it's tied up to the back of a bead, it can be difficult to get it tight as such because it's quite a thick wrap. Um, and also, these things are intended for catch and release, you know, and catching multiple fish in a day. So it could give, but if there's two wraps, one underneath the other, uh, two finishes off as such, then even if one gives, the chances are that the second one's going to hold and give you a prolonged life to the fly. So once I've that done, what I'll do is I'll take uh, a dubbing needle, and uh, this is Vineyard Salir Clear, so a good thin clear varnish, and just coat our tie in. And that is our fly tie, so it's a, a black and orange uh, mop fly. So hopefully you like what you see. Uh, if you did, give it a like, subscribe, tell your friends, check out all the other videos on the channel. And until next time, tight lines. Thanks for watching.